I'm Ella, I'm 27, and I work as an IT manager at a top tech firm. I pretty much live at my desk, so when my friend Lara dragged me to her birthday bash at a fancy downtown restaurant, I had no idea my night would start with a splash, literally. Stepping out of the taxi, ready to maybe enjoy myself for once, I was met by a wall of muddy water. Some guy in a fancy car thought the puddle next to me was perfect for a splash scene straight out of a movie. My brand new dress took the hit, soaking up the murky water like a sponge. Fantastic, I muttered, glaring at my ruined outfit. Hey, I am so, so sorry. The driver, a tall, rugged type with messy hair, jumped out looking more horrified than I felt. He approached with his hands raised as if I might smack him with my purse. You've got to be kidding me. Look at my dress. I snapped, too shocked to accept an apology. Laura, ever the peacemaker, rushed over, stifling a laugh. Ella, meet Darren, she said, barely keeping a straight face. Darren, this is Ella, the birthday girl's very best friend who you just drenched. Darren winced. Great first impression, huh? He said with a crooked smile that was probably supposed to be charming. Let me make it up to you. Dinner on me to start with because you've got a tab running for ruining dresses. I shot back. Do you have a tab running for ruining dresses? Lara nudged me. Give him a break. Look, come on, it's just water. It'll dry, she chuckled, linking her arm in mine and leading me toward the entrance. Darren followed, looking genuinely apologetic and slightly amused by my fiery welcome. Inside, the restaurant buzzed with Lara's other friends, but she steered us to a quieter corner with a clean, dry table. You guys start here. I'll grab drinks and Ella. Try not to murder him before I get back, she teased, leaving Darren and me in an awkward silence. He pulled out a chair for me and I sat, folding my arms. I'm Darren, and before I made a splash, I was actually hoping to meet you tonight. Lara has told me a lot about you. He started trying to smooth things over. Did she also tell you I hate surprises? I quipped, finally cracking a reluctant smile. I'm Ella, IT manager and apparently a mud magnet. Darren laughed. I work in marketing. Maybe I can help you market your new look. Post puddle chic could be the next big thing. I rolled my eyes. Don't quit your day job, I said, warming up to his attempt at humor. Lara returned with a tray of drinks, breaking the ice further. Here, maybe this will clean the slate, she said, handing us our drinks. So, Darren, got any more surprises up your sleeve? I asked, taking a sip of my drink. Just my charming personality and dazzling conversation skills, he replied with a grin. Oh, and an apology dinner. I'm serious about that. Let me take you out to make up for the disaster. I considered him for a moment, his earnest face making me soften a bit. All right, you're on, I conceded, but I'm choosing the place, somewhere without any puddles nearby. By the end of the night, the dress was still a mess, but my initial anger had dried up, replaced by a reluctant intrigue toward Darren. Maybe this disaster of a night could turn into something worthwhile. After Darren's disastrous yet somehow endearing introduction, we started seeing each other. It wasn't long before casual dinners turned into weekend getaways, late night talks, and eventually meeting each other's families. I should have known things would get more complicated once families got involved. Look, I really like you, Ella, Darren said one evening as we walked through the park, his hand finding mine. I think it's time you met my folks. What do you say? Sure, I agreed, squeezing his hand and trying to ignore the nervous flutter in my stomach. Meeting the parents was a big step, but after the way we started, what was the worst that could happen? The day arrived and Darren drove us to a modest house in the suburbs. His mom, Janet, and his dad, Tom, greeted us with warm smiles that didn't quite reach their eyes. Dinner was served, and that's when the questions began. So, Ella, Darren tells us you're in IT, Tom asked, passing me the mashed potatoes. Yeah, I manage a team at a tech firm downtown. 
I answered, trying to keep my tone light. Janet leaned in, her eyes sharp. Must be a good position. What does that pay, if you don't mind my asking? He choked on my water a bit. Well, it's enough to keep me busy and out of trouble. I joked, trying to dodge the question. And your family? Do you support anyone? Janet continued, her gaze fixed on me like a detective interrogating a suspect. Just my aunt, I replied, feeling my cheeks heat up. She raised me, so I help her out when I can. That's very noble of you, Tom noted, his tone suggesting he was sizing up my financial worthiness rather than my character. I changed the subject, talking about a recent project at work, but the vibe had shifted. We left soon after dessert, and I exhaled a breath I didn't realize I'd been holding. On the drive back, I mentioned the interrogation to Darren. Your parents have a lot of questions about money, huh? Darren shrugged. That's just how they are. Always planning, always calculating. Don't sweat it. Later that night, I decided to call my aunt Tessa to unload. Ella, you need to watch out. She warned after hearing about the dinner. People who start with money questions never stop. They're marking you. Tessa, they were just curious, I guess. Darren says it's normal for them. Normal, honey? There's curious and there's nosy. And those two sound like they're planning to spend your money, not get to know you, she cautioned, her voice stern with experience. Months passed, and Darren's charm outweighed my reservations. When he proposed, it was sweet, simple, and in the same park where we decided to meet his parents. Marry me, Ella. Let's start our own family tradition, he said, his eyes hopeful. I said yes, the ring was beautiful, and the moment felt right. My doubts about his parents lingered, but love, as they say, was blind. As I prepared for bed that night, Aunt Tessa's words echoed in my head, mixing with Lara's. A knot of worry settled in my stomach, but I pushed it aside. Darren was worth it. His parents, well, I'd crossed that bridge when I came to it, but deep down I knew that bridge was coming up fast, and I wasn't sure I was ready for what was on the other side. Wedding planning kicked off at full throttle after Darren popped the question. I was over the moon, busy choosing flowers and tasting cake samples. I expected it to be stressful, but fun. What I didn't expect was how quickly the red flags would start waving, not just fluttering in the breeze. One evening, as we sat down with our laptops to budget our expenses, Darren looked unusually tense. Ella, I've got to tell you something. He started avoiding my eyes. My job's been a bit rocky lately. I might not be able to chip in as much as I wanted for the wedding. I raised an eyebrow, putting down my coffee. Okay, how much are we talking? He sighed, rubbing the back of his neck. I can barely cover the band, maybe. So what? I cover everything else. The venue, catering, photographer? I asked, my voice sharper than I intended. Darren winced. I hate asking you this, babe, but yeah, I think you'll need to just until I sort things out at work. I leaned back, processing. We can downsize, cut the guest list, cheaper venue? No, Darren cut in quickly, a little too quickly. I mean, my parents would be upset. They've already told everyone. It's got to be good, Ella. My stomach nodded. Fine. I said finally, not wanting to argue, but we'll need to stick to a strict budget. As the wedding day approached, the expenses piled up and Darren's contributions dwindled. His parents, Janet and Tom, were no help either. They had opinions about everything from the flower arrangements to the menu, but never once offered financial help or to tone down their lavish tastes. The wedding day itself was beautiful despite the behind-the-scenes drama. I managed to push aside my frustration and focus on Darren, who looked genuinely happy as he waited for me at the altar. The ceremony was perfect, but the reception was where things started to unravel. As we mingled with guests, I noticed Janet and Tom huddled around the gift table, whispering and pointing. Curious, I wandered over. Everything okay here? I asked trying to sound casual. 
Oh, Ella, we're just sorting some of these gifts. They'll look better at our house, don't you think? Janet said, her voice too sweet. I stared at her, stunned. What? No, these gifts are for Darren and me. Tom shrugged, smirking. Come on, Ella, don't be petty. We're family now. What's ours is yours and vice versa, right? I felt my face flush with anger. No, Tom, that's not how this works. These gifts are for us, for our home, not yours. Janet rolled her eyes. Really, Ella, don't make a fuss. Be gracious. We're just taking a few things, nothing major. I bit my tongue, holding back a sharper retort. The last thing I wanted was a scene at my wedding. But as they walked away with a few gift envelopes and smaller presents in hand, I felt a simmering rage. After the wedding, it didn't take long for Darren's parents' true colors to start showing even more. Every time we invited them over or there was a family gathering to attend, it was like opening a new chapter in the Book of Greed. For my birthday, I decided to throw a little dinner at a nice restaurant in town. I thought it would be a nice change from home parties. I invited Darren and his parents, Janet and Tom. I hope this place is okay for you guys, I mentioned casually as we sat down. The restaurant had a cozy vibe, not too flashy, but with great views. Janet scanned the menu with a raised eyebrow. Well, it looks quaint. What's good here? I recommended a couple of dishes that were my favorites, reasonably priced and delicious. But as the waiter came around to take our order, Janet and Tom went off script. We'll have the lobster tails and, oh, the filet mignon, and start us with a bottle of your finest wine, Tom declared, handing the menu back with a satisfied grin. I bit my lip to keep from reacting. That's quite a selection, I managed to say, keeping my tone as neutral as possible. Janet smiled sweetly. It's your birthday, dear. We should celebrate in style. The rest of the evening, I watched as they ordered more expensive items, barely touching them when they arrived. It irked me to no end seeing good food and money wasted like that. On the ride home, I let Darren have it. Your parents always do this. They choose the priciest things and don't even enjoy them. It's like they do it just because they can. Babe, calm down. That's just how they are. You know, old school. They like to show off a bit. Darren explained as if that was supposed to make me feel better. But it's disrespectful, Darren. They don't even think about how it looks or what it costs. I argued, frustrated. Darren sighed. Look, they're from a different time. Just let it slide. They mean well. The incident was soon followed by the holidays, which brought their own set of challenges. Christmas rolled around and gift-giving turned into another display of imbalance. I spent time picking out thoughtful gifts for everyone, including Janet and Tom, ensuring to get them something they'd mentioned wanting. In return, they handed me a clearly last-minute discounted item still in the sale bag. Here you go, dear, Janet said, handing it over without much fanfare. I smiled, keeping my disappointment in check. Thanks. I hope you like what I got you, I replied, handing them their gifts, which were more than twice as expensive. Oh, how lovely, Tom said flatly, barely glancing at what was inside the package. The lack of effort on their part stung, especially when I saw the genuine appreciation for my friends for the simple but thoughtful gifts I had given them. Back home, I vented to Darren, it's always like this with them expensive tastes when they're spending my money, but when it's their turn, they just don't bother. Darren shrugged, looking uncomfortable. It's just how they show on the affection. A $5 scarf from the clearance bin isn't affection, Darren. It's an insult. I snapped, tired of making excuses for them. After dealing with one too many incidents of Darren's parents pushing their boundaries, I figured it was time for a change. When my big bonus hit, I knew exactly what I wanted to do. Darren, let's go to Hawaii, I said one night while we were sitting on the couch trying to decide how to celebrate. Hawaii? That sounds amazing, babe, he replied, his eyes lighting up. Just the two of us. 
Exactly. Just us. It's romantic, and I've always wanted to go. I explained, excited at the thought of sandy beaches and no family drama. A couple of days later, I was in the middle of booking our trip when Darren came home from visiting his folks. He looked unusually excited. Guess what? My parents are stoked about Hawaii. I paused, my fingers hovering over the keyboard. Wait, what do you mean? I thought this was just for us. Darren laughed a bit too nervously. Yeah, I mean it is, but I mentioned it, and they've never been to Hawaii. They got super excited and... Hold on, I cut him off, feeling my stomach tighten. You invited them? No, no, not exactly. I just told them about it, and they kind of invited themselves, he explained quickly. I closed my laptop with a snap. Darren, this was supposed to be our trip. Romantic, remember? He came over and sat down next to me, taking my hands. I know, I know, but they really want to go. Can't we just? No, we can't just. Interrupted, pulling my hands away. This isn't a family vacation, Darren. It's for us. He was quiet for a moment, then his phone buzzed. He glanced at it and frowned. They're already looking at flights. They think we're all going. That's because you didn't set boundaries, I exclaimed, frustration building. We can talk about this later, he said, standing up and going to the kitchen. But later came sooner than expected. The next day, Darren's parents showed up at our house, all smiles. Ella, dear, we've been looking at tours and hotels in Hawaii, Janet said cheerily. I was dumbfounded. We haven't decided anything yet, I replied. Tom chimed in, his tone expected. Well, we thought it was settled. We're all excited to go. I looked at Darren, expecting some support. Darren, tell them, I urged. He rubbed the back of his neck, avoiding my gaze. Look, why don't we all go? It'll be fun and we can split the costs, he suggested weakly. I stared at him, then at them. No, that's not what we planned. Janet's face fell but we thought it was a family trip. It's a romantic getaway for me and Darren. Just us, I stated firmly, feeling my resolve harden. There was an awkward silence, then Tom said, well, if that's how you feel, maybe you're being a bit selfish, Ella. I couldn't believe what I was hearing. Selfish for wanting to spend time alone with my husband. The conversation ended with them calling me selfish and leaving the house in a huff. Darren was quiet for a moment before he exploded. You could have just let them come, Ella. Why do you have to be like this? I'm like this. I just wanted something for us, Darren. Just us. I shouted back, my voice echoing in the empty room. He didn't say anything after that. He just walked out of the room. And that was it. We didn't talk for a whole week. I woke up to an eerie silence in the house that morning, the kind that instantly told you something was off. Rolling over, I grabbed my phone off the nightstand and was greeted by a slew of notifications that punched the air right out of me. Three tickets to Hawaii, all booked under my name, and a reservation for a hotel also charged to my account. I sat up, my heart pounding as reality set in. Darren had done this. He and his parents were probably on their way to Hawaii right now, all on my dime. I didn't even bother calling. What was there to say? It was clear as day. My husband had taken the liberty to use my account to fund his little family getaway despite everything we had discussed. Anger bubbled up inside me, and without a second thought, I logged into the booking site and canceled everything. Then I moved swiftly to my banking app and cut off his access to my funds. Hours later, my phone rang. It was Darren, and his tone was less than pleasant. Ella, what the hell? Why were we not checked into the hotel? And where are our return tickets? I held the phone away from my ear for a second, taking a deep breath to steady my voice. Because I'm not your ATN, Darren. I'm done funding your family's fantasies. You're all just a bunch of selfish leeches. He sputtered on the other end, clearly not expecting me to take such drastic measures. You can't just do that. 
We're stuck here now. If you don't fix this, I'll, I'll divorce you. I almost laughed at the irony. Go ahead, Darren. Do what you need to do. But don't expect another dime from me. I hung up, my hands trembling with a mix of rage and relief. Almost immediately, my phone buzzed with messages from both Darren and his mom. Threats, pleas, accusations. They tried every angle, but I wasn't having any of it. I didn't wait around for Darren to get back. Instead, I called a lawyer and started the divorce process myself. It was rough knowing that a chapter of my life was ending like this, but there was no way I was going to stick around with someone who treated me like a cash machine for him and his parents. After hanging up with the lawyer, I drove to Aunt Tessa's house. She opened the door before I even knocked, like she knew I was coming and why. Aunt Tessa, I filed for divorce, I said, as soon as I stepped inside. She just nodded, not saying, I told you so, but her look said it all. You did the right thing, Ella. I know it's hard, but you're better off without someone who lets his family treat you that way. The next few days were a blur of sorting out my things and setting up a temporary life at Aunt Tessa's. I was starting to feel a bit more like myself, a bit steadier, when Darren showed up. He looked miserable standing there on Aunt Tessa's front porch, a sad sight if I ever saw one. Ella, please, can we talk? I'm sorry, I messed up, but we can fix this. Almost laughed at the audacity. Fix this, Darren? You chose your parents over your wife, used my money to take them to Hawaii after everything. There's no fixing that. Ella, I just... No, Darren, you just showed me who you really are, and I don't want any part of that life. I interrupted, crossing my arms. You and your parents are cut from the same cloth. All take and no give. I'm done. Darren's face fell, and for a moment, I almost felt sorry for him. But then I remembered all the stress and hurt, and the sympathy vanished. I hope you figure out your stuff, Darren, but you need to do it away from me. I added, turning to go back inside. Aunt Tessa was waiting right by the door, having heard it all. She didn't say much, just took my hand and gave it a squeeze. You're strong, Ella, stronger than you think. Two weeks after everything fell apart, I found myself sitting in a stark law office across from Darren and his parents. The air was tense, charged with unsaid things and last-minute pleas. Darren looked worn, almost regretful, but it was his parents who took the lead. Ella, please reconsider this. His mother started, her voice dripping with a sweetness I knew was as fake as her sympathy. We were all so good together. Remember the trips, the holidays. I couldn't help but scoff. You mean the trips I paid for? The holidays where I was treated more like a bank than a family member. Darren's father chimed in, trying a softer approach. We know things got a little out of hand, but we're family. Isn't that worth fighting for? I shook my head, amazed by their audacity. Family doesn't use each other. This isn't just a little out of hand. You showed me exactly how little you respect me. Darren finally spoke. Ella, I'm sorry. Can't we start over? We can fix this. I looked at him, really looked at him, and saw nothing of the man I thought I'd married. Start over. After everything? No, Darren, we can't. His mother, not used to being dismissed, lost her composure. Because of you, we had to pay our way back from Hawaii. Do you know how much that cost us? I laughed, not because it was funny, but because it was so absurd. Your greed and arrogance got you there, and they got you back. Seems fitting to me. The meeting ended with me standing firm and then still trying to grasp at straws as they saw their control slipping away. I walked out of the office feeling lighter, as if I was finally shedding a heavy weight that had been pulling me down. After the divorce was finalized, I took one last step to ensure my new beginning was clear of any remnants of my old life with them. I blocked their numbers, all of them. Darren, his mother, his father. No more calls, no more manipulative messages. It was truly over. Back at Aunt Tessa's, I explained everything. 
she just hugged me tight and said, You did the right thing, Ella. It's time to focus on yourself now. And she was right. As I began to put the pieces of my life back together, I found strength I never knew I had. I returned to work with new vigor, embraced my friends who'd been my support through it all, and started planning for a future that belonged only to me, one filled with possibilities, free from deceit and manipulation. Two weeks after everything fell apart, I found myself sitting in a stark law office across from Darren and his parents. The air was tense, charged with unsaid things and last-minute pleas. Darren looked worn, almost regretful, but it was his parents who took the lead. Ella, please reconsider this. His mother started, her voice dripping with a sweetness I knew was as fake as her sympathy. We were all so good together. Remember the trips, the holidays. I couldn't help but scoff. You mean the trips I paid for? The holidays where I was treated more like a bank than a family member. Darren's father chimed in, trying a softer approach. We know things got a little out of hand, but we're family. Isn't that worth fighting for? I shook my head, amazed by their audacity. Family doesn't use each other. This isn't just a little out of hand. You showed me exactly how little you respect me. Darren finally spoke. Ella, I'm sorry. Can't we start over? We can fix this. I looked at him, really looked at him, and saw nothing of the man I thought I'd married. Start over. After everything? No, Darren, we can't. His mother, not used to being dismissed, lost her composure. Because of you, we had to pay our way back from Hawaii. Do you know how much that cost us? I laughed, not because it was funny, but because it was so absurd. Your greed and arrogance got you there, and they got you back. Seems fitting to me. The meeting ended with me standing firm and then still trying to grasp at straws as they saw their control slipping away. I walked out of the office feeling lighter as if I was finally shedding a heavy weight that had been pulling me down. After the divorce was finalized, I took one last step to ensure my new beginning was clear of any remnants of my old life with them. Blocked their numbers. All of them. Darren, his mother, his father, no more calls, no more manipulative messages. It was truly over. Back at Aunt Tessa's, I explained everything. She just hugged me tight and said, You did the right thing, Ella. It's time to focus on yourself now. And she was right. As I began to put the pieces of my life back together, I found strength I never knew I had. I returned to work with new vigor, embraced my friends who'd been my support through it all, and started planning for a future that belonged only to me, one filled with possibilities, free from deceit and manipulation.